find uh, the two in a symmetrical manner. I'll be thinking about the uh, possibilities of uh, psoriatic arthritis and other uh, differential will be uh, osteoarthritis. So I would look at the clinical uh, details of the patient and uh, whether he is a non case of uh, non case of uh, psoriasis, and also I would look at the rest of the uh, clinical uh, lab findings also. What do you think about these? Would you would you call them erosions or? Uh... They're just something else. Yeah, they look like gulping type. No, I'm not sure. So, uh, it, the joint fine. space is lost, uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, some marginal sclerosis. Of course, some. Uh, with soft tissue uh, thickening is there. I'm not able to make out uh, for some. Uh, I'm not able to make out any uh, erosions as such. Okay, so you wouldn't call these erosions. Yeah, where you are pointing, actually, it looks a bit light thick, and it could be an erosion. I'm not very uh, sure. The alternative being, if it's not an erosion, then uh, it's just depression. Subchondral cyst. Yeah, it could be a subchondral cyst. Uh... All right, interesting. I will come back. So, no clinical history. Okay, this is. Uh... A cervical uh, CT images of uh, cervical spine is provided in bone window, and there is a marked involvement of uh, CV junction, craniovertebral junction, with uh, the atlanto axial joint space. Is Atlanta axial joint is predominantly involved with uh, marginal sclerosis, multiple subchondral cysts, and there is uh, subluxation of uh, C2 over uh, C3, anterior subluxation of C2 over C3. And uh, there is some uh, ankylosis of the uh, anterior atlanto axial joint. So, with extensive involvement of uh, craniovertebral junction and uh, cervical spine, spine with subluxation of C2, C3, in an elderly patient, I'll, in an uh, elderly person, I'll be thinking about possibilities. I'll be thinking uh, here as uh, ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis. So, I'll look at the uh, clinical history of the uh, person whether uh, he or she is a known case of rheumatoid arthritis or an ankylosing spondylitis or psoriasis and then make a conclusion. And, so, uh, this uh, is... Can you give me any other thing which could cause these uh, typical erosions? These are definitely erosions of the dense. So any other differential that is coming to your mind which could give uh, erosions with this sort of uh, appearance of the rest of the spine? This, this appearance is produced by the panis of rheumatoid arthritis. Other uh, uh, possibility here could be gout with uh, the soft tissue, lytic uh, punched out lesions of uh, uh, gouty uh, soft eye. Right. Okay. Uh, any final this time? Yeah, the, because. Uh, there is a subluxation at C2, C3 uh, level and possible cord compression. I'll be, uh, I'll alert the referring clinician regarding the findings and the patient might need an emergency, uh, and might need an MRI on emergency basis. Uh, and also the stabilization is uh, required in this case. Sure. Uh, 
this is a uh, okay uh, this is a bond scan uh, anterior and the posterior uh, projections are given and uh, the it shows a, a diffuse increase in uptake of the uh, both uh, leg bones the femur as well as uh, the both leg bones fairly symmetrical involvement and also the upper limb uh, the humerus in uh, humerus is showing diffuse increase in uptake then the mandible as well as the base of skull is showing uptake the kidneys are not seen um, taking up the technetium and also the vertebrae are uh, showing vertebrae are showing normal uptake so here this will be a super scan with the predominant uh, uptake involving the mandible as well as the appendicular skeleton so uh, i'll be thinking about um, a metabolic cause like hyperparathyroidism in this case and also a differential here would be bone metastasis so you said this I'll is look at a, a metabolic or a metastatic super scan you said it's a metabolic right i mean you're going for the metabolic causes so why bring in metastasis in the middle uh no the first uh, uh, first uh, possibility i'm thinking here is metabolic right and uh, i would like to have a look at the uh, clinical picture of the person and also the plain films if available to get into a conclusion so these are the plain films okay uh this the uh, lateral uh, view of skull it shows uh, thickened uh, calvarial bones and also there is multiple uh, uh, there is uh, appearance of granularity suggesting um uh hyperparathyroidism i would I like to have a look at the um, axial skeleton any images of vertebrae okay this the lumbar spine lateral view showing uh an area of calcific uh, density overlapping the lower uh, lumbar spine this could be the uh, calcified uh, uh, renal uh, transplant kidney and again uh, some enplaced sclerosis of the vertebrae are also seen the findings uh, uh, suggest the possibility of a chronic renal failure so uh, all these are fitting with the diagnosis of uh, metabolic cause of uh, super scan and secondary hyperparathyroidism okay this is the next the frontal radiograph of the distal tibia fibula including the ankle joint okay um there is a bony uh, spicule on along the medial aspect of the distal tibia
the ankle joint is appearing normal and the rest of the bones are appearing normal so i would like to obtain a history of trauma in this case this patient actually presented with trauma with ankle okay. twist injury Um, he is having difficulty walking and just pain of the leg. Okay. So uh, I would like to uh, roll out an avulsion injury. In this case. Avulsion of what? Okay, the bony spicule I'm seeing is uh, along the medial malleolus. So I'm yeah. not sure about the structure that's been attached there. Uh, generally, I don't think there's anything attaching on the medial malleolus. The 15 minutes are up. Okay, up uh, to you. Last so this... Uh, this is a fracture. I mean, if you if you get it in an RR packet, you would uh, write this as fracture. Okay. Be, uh, especially since you have been given the history that the patient has presented with a twisting injury. So you have okay. a fracture of the medial malleolus. What would you tell the physician? Uh, I, I I didn't get you. Uh, you the, the medial malleolus is fractured. What would be your final concluding remarks or the next step? Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, the findings should be informed to the referring clinician. Uh, uh, referring uh, clinician on emergency basis and immobilization should be done. Would you like to do any more uh, x-rays of this patient? Any lateral view, orthogonal view. Okay. Uh, There's a lateral a lateral view of the ankle. Uh, all right. And I'm not sure. How, uh, okay. Stress, right. uh, stress. Okay, fine. So sure. basically, uh, this fracture, the stress radiates to the interosseous ligament and it goes all the way up to the knee. So it's important to remember that uh, uh, we also okay, have okay. to uh, have to screen the proximal uh, leg to see for this associated fracture of the proximal fibula, which is together. Do you know the name together? What it will be called? The the name of this fracture. Masonave fracture. Yeah, okay. masonave fracture. Oh uh, yes, I think uh, overall you did very well. Actually, you got all the diagnoses. Uh, we'll just start from the back. So this one, you you went spot on, except you know uh, in the middle you started confusing two things. So for uh, metabolic super scan, you get the increased uptake in the ax uh, appendicular skeleton, whereas for uh, metastatic super scan, you only get increased uptake. You generally only get increased uptake of the axial skeleton. Uh, so or or maybe even the you know the proximal uh, proximal limbs. So when you have this distal uptake the, along with uptake, uniform uptake along the cortices, then it's clearly a metabolic super scan and the primary differential or the primary cause will be of that of hyperparathyroidism. Uh, with the x-ray, you struggled a bit with this. This is a, an aunt mini again, multiple focal lytic areas, uh, which is classical for a pepper pot skull, right? Uh, so just thick in calvarium. You got the description right, but you were unable to recall the name of the appearance, which is a pepper pot skull. Uh, the X-ray of the lumbar spine was very well dealt with. This is indeed a rejected transplant kidney, which is shown uh, seen here as a calcified mass. Hi. Uh, this one, actually, the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis. We have uh, many classical features like you described. We have a hyperplastic panus, which is causing erosion of the tens, although I felt you did not stress on that. So you completely ignored the erosions, <laughs> even though erosions were like uh, the main findings which would have led to a diagnosis. Second differential that I would think of over here is TPPD, because you know in TPPD also you uh -uh. have this, this mass and pseudomass and erosions of the dents. 
okay there is subluxation of c2 over c3 but there is also subluxation of the of the distal cervical vertebrae as well you know and it goes on in a step ladder sort of fashion with uh, degenerative changes of course so this is also a classic presentation of or classic appearance of uh, rheumatoid and if you mention it i think it will give you extra brownie points the step, step ladder configuration of, of uh, subluxation okay Okay, so for this one, I, I felt like these erosions were quite striking, and uh, to me, I don't know what others are saying because I cannot see the chat. But uh, to, to me, uh, you know, it, it's very uh, stereotypical of erosive osteoarthritis. But the okay. answer is actually psoriatic arthropathy, uh, because there is you know soft tissue swelling and there's fuzzy bone. Subchondral sclerosis, whatever. There are many other features, you know, other than erosions, which point to the psoriatic arthropathy. And since you missed the erosion, you got the diagnosis right. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, but in case you had concentrated on the erosions, uh, then I would have told you that you know the first uh, metacarpophalangeal joint is is preserved. The other joints are preserved, which are uh, typical, uh, typically involved in uh, osteoarthropathy, okay, degenerative osteoarthropathy. But importantly, whenever you're describing arthritis of the hands, you need to further describe the soft tissue swelling as well, as in there are no calcifications, there are no osteophyte formation, and oh, you okay. also need to mention the bone density. So the bone density over here is preserved, which uh, rules out the rheumatoid. Okay, not just okay. the distribution of the joints, but also the bone density. Okay, so yeah, okay. you you did uh, you did excellent for this case actually. <laughs> Uh, last case, yeah, you got this bang on ratchetic uh, uh, rosary beads. Uh, just, just to start the playlist, just to get your mouth moving, I thought I'll put this in. So yeah, I think we're done. Uh, I, uh, you asked any other condition that uh, pro yeah, scurvy. produces similar picture? Uh, scurvy is, scurvy, is, a, right? okay. is a differential, okay. but it won't be as nodular in appearance. It'll yeah, okay. be slightly step off, but uh, it's there as a, as a differential. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Vasif and Dr. Vijaya. It's never easy to be at the hot seat. I mean, it takes courage to come. And so, mashallah, still... Dr. Vijaya was a pro, I mean. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I know. I was impressed. Uh, she just went directly For to sure. all the time. The cases were, were, were not easy. They were good cases. The typical FRCR2B cases we get. And, uh, you know, um, just uh, uh, from the chat, just wanted to emphasize certain things regarding our session. Uh, you know, this, this session, will is not will not be like the ones which would be done by the external to be tutors it's us who are uh, you know interacting with each other so the the question here is not a perfection but a participation we want to know how to go through the list how to as dr vasif said how to get our mouth moving how to overcome the cases with which we feel stuck and to learn from each other so there might be some things which we would not agree with regarding the diagnosis or the differential diagnosis we always have the books to go back to that is not a problem. But what we are here to learn is to get over, overcome our hesitancy to come on the hot seat and to, uh, trust me, this 15 minutes is very long when one is in the hot seat. It, it, the time does not go away. <laughs> so that is our, uh, our, uh, you know, our, uh, um, uh, our goal. So just to make it clear. Thank you so much, Dr. Vasim, Dr. Vajay. No, Excellent sessions. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ayaz and Dr. Rashida, uh, if you both could unmute yourself. Okay. Hello, Dr. Sabahad. Yes, Dr. yes, I can hear you. Dr. Sanish, do you want to add something or we can proceed to the next session? Uh, uh, actually, uh, Dr. Vijay did well, but uh, two, two, uh, two, three points can I point out if you don't mind? Sure, why not? We are here to learn. There is nothing personal here. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, people all, always like positive feedbacks, but we have to get the negative feedbacks also. Uh, what I felt is, I don't feel bad. Uh, you you are showing too much silence uh, in between. So um, you have to keep on moving, like uh, uh, when you start, especially. And also, uh, you always ask the orthogonal plane. And uh, and uh, when the history is not given, like the age of the patient is not given, you have to say it is an adult patient, especially if it is a uh, MSK case. And uh, uh, for one minute, don't take more than two minutes and always use buzzwords like uh, pepper pot skull 
uh, those those things and all and once you got the diagnosis uh, don't hesitate and uh, uh, hit it for a six and finish the case but uh, you were uh, dragging in between and uh, you uh, skipped so many you can i think you if you could have seen uh, three more cases in this session uh, if you because you know the diagnosis but you are not finishing it first okay got it got it i'll work on it thank you so much yeah yeah don't take it personal because we all want to improve no, no, never, I, never. <laughs> I, I, I am i am i was also like this and uh, just uh, getting feedbacks from others only we can improve so you are really? good uh, and don't uh, uh, you, you will hit a six next time i'm sure thank you dr ayas can you share your screen please you can be the examiner first and dr rashida could be the hot seat volunteer okay. load of thanks to both of you for volunteering dr rashida the stage is all yours eh uh, dr rashida can you hear me very well hello dr can rashida you can you hear me yes i can this can is you hear me? yeah yeah this is a 50 years old uh, female patient who has pain on abduction and there is history of breast cancer so this x ray was done okay so can you take up this x ray Yes, I say this is the radiograph of the right shoulder of the 50-year-old woman who has a history of shoulder pain and abduction and a history of breast cancer. I can see a, a fairly well-defined lucent lesion in the region of the right greater tubercle of the head of the humerus. Uh, this lesion has it's light scler light sclerotic uh, a thin sclerotic rim. in the inferior aspect uh, i do not see any any periosteal reaction or any soft tissue involvement there is no bridge in the cortex i do not see any bone lesion elsewhere on this radiograph the visualized part of the lungs show no concerning abnormality uh with a history of breast cancer I would my first differential would be a lytic metastasis uh I would want to um inform them inform the clinical uh, the clinician of my findings and also uh, find out if this if there are any previous radiographs for comparison if this is a new finding uh I would want to further evaluate um this patient to confirm that it's a metastatic lesion and this may require uh restaging of the patient because of the history of the breast cancer i would also want to refer this patient to uh the musculoskeletal or the oncology mdt for further management okay so your uh, next step will be the referral to the mdt oncology if this is a new lesion or if it has been staged already if it's a new lesion it would need to be restaged but if it is an old if it's an old lesion and they are aware of it then it would not they would not need to do any staging yes. but i would want to that's fine uh, that's fine so what will be the strategy strategy for uh, restaging you told uh, me you will you will do ct chest abdomen pelvis there is anything else for local uh, staging can be done anything for local staging yes uh, i would want to do preferably an mr uh, a bone scan can also be done to look for other possible um, metastases elsewhere in the body and yes basically the restaging here is to look for further metastases elsewhere in the bone okay so for uh, for your ease actually the patient was the healthcare worker and she underwent at the same time uh, an mri of the is sorry okay so the patient has gone for mri for local staging and these are the mr pictures can you take up these images okay so these are the upper one is a t1 uh, weighted 
um, sequence and the second one is a fluid sensitive sequence and the lesion actually seen on the um, x-ray cannot be demonstrated on this MR um, on this limited MR spot images uh, in that case it may not be actually um, a metastatic lesion and um, it may be there is actually I can't remember the exact name now whereby you have that lucent appearance in that region in the humerus and it is not an abnormality Yes, the, 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 the name of this lesion is a pseudo lesion. Yes, pseudo lesion, when, when, when you don't see the lesion in uh, the cross sectional imaging or another modality. So, what you are going to do now? So, in this case, then I can reassure um, the clinician that this is not um, related, this, there's no abnormality to be worried about here, and it's not related to the a breast cancer because the major worry is that of metastasis so the patient can actually be can actually be reassured <coughs> that's fine that's fine so you will reassure the patient and discharge the patient yeah uh, if since the only complaint is in the shoulder and i don't see any abnormality then yes i can discharge this patient okay that's fine that's good so will uh, move excellent excellent that's fine actually this case uh, uh, okay i will come to it this is uh, one x-ray and no history is provided the one radiographer is bringing to you this x-ray for reporting and um, can you take up this x-ray okay so this is a frontal radiograph of the abdomen of an adult patient uh, I can see multiple um, amorphous calcifications in the region of the uh, left hypochondrion. Uh, there is also this diffuse um, sclerosis in the region of the pelvis. I'm not sure if this is due to, if is, this is real or it's due to technical factors. Uh, the rest of the bones, uh, the rest of the bones appear unremarkable. So based on this findings of um, multiple calcific foci in the left hypochondrion, uh, these are concerning for soft tissue calcifications. Um, I'll be so what you will what what you will do? Uh, I would be, um, I'll be thinking of possible causes of soft calcifications here. These calcifications could also be within the spleen. Uh, I would want to look for any previous imaging to compare with. I would also want to find out from the clinician if this patient has any um, renal abnormal, any chronic renal failure. Uh, I could also do and um, recommend an ultrasound to look at the spleen if it's enlarged and if there are calcifications within it. Uh, I could also compare this, um, correlate this with the serial markers of the patient to look for features of hyperparathyroidism. Uh, uh, which serial markers you you are thinking about? Sorry. Uh, though you told me serial markers of. Yes, I'll be. I'll look at the serum calcium, the parat hormone. Okay, so you are not sure on this one that this is uh, in soft tissues outside the chest or in spleen. Um, okay, I, I, for okay this. for 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 your uh, ease, there is some change in the technical factor as you mentioned, and this is another view with slight uh, change in gain and brightness. And uh, these are the both views. Now, can you re-examine these x-rays? This is the same x-ray, but there is some change in the technical factors. So can you, can you uh, re have a review of this one, your findings, other, other than the splenic calcifications or soft tissue calcifications? Now, there is anything changed by these uh, parameters? Any, <laughs> anything on your side is changed? of the bones 
of the rest of the bones aside the one overlying the pelvis. So there may actually be some diffuse sclerosis of the bones in addition okay. to calcific densities. Okay, this is, uh, this is projectional, leave, leave the sclerosis. Okay. There is anything else other than this clear bone sclerosis? Okay, also, uh, oh yes, I can see in the region of the left kidney, I can see yes. uh, focal Very good. Um, densities that are likely to be calcific densities in the region of the medulla of the kidney, suggestive of medullary stenosis. Yes, very good. And this could also support my initial thought of um, uh, a secondary hyperparathyroidism. Um, okay. This could also be seen in um, medullary sponge kidney, but that is usually bilateral. Yes. Uh, Hyper uh, hyperparathyroidism hyper uh, also is a systemic disease should be more bilateral. Here we don't see anything on the right side. Can you yeah. make any combination? Can you make any combination of renal calcification with splenic calcification? Let's say if it is splenic, as you are thinking before. Uh, renal calcification with splenic. I'll be thinking of tuberculosis. Yes, very good. Uh, mainly tuberculosis, really. Okay, so if you are thinking about tuberculosis, what you will do with next with this patient? Uh, if I'm thinking of tuberculosis, um, I would want to look look at any previous chest radiographs if there are. If there are no chest radiographs, I would like to do a chest radiograph for this patient. So look okay. For any features of um, post prime any features of post primary tuberculosis, uh, and I would also want to. The, um, the acid fast bacilli for the patient to confirm the diagnosis of if there is active TB. Uh, right. Uh, basically, and also try to um, extract any clinical history to support um, TB in this patient from the clinician. Okay, the clinician actually, the, the, the doctors responsible for this patient, they inform you that the patient is known to have TB in the past. Okay. So anything relevant for this uh, uh, x-ray with this history? A previous TB in the past. If this yes. patient is not having any new symptoms to suggest the reactivation, then this may just be an old sequelae of previous TB and I may not need to do anything further if patient has no symptoms presently. But if patient is having symptoms, this could also be, uh, maybe if patient is presenting with features of renal failure, this may be sequelae of, you know, the TB affecting the kidneys. I, I really don't understand. <laughs> okay, the, the clinicians, the clinicians, they came to know, um, came to you and they are thinking that uh, they are having uh, a fear that the patient immune status uh, might change uh, uh, because because they are thinking about some uh, malignancy. There is anything here on this film because they are thinking that uh, the patient might have some malignancy and uh, patient can have um, um, uh, immunosuppression due to this malignancy and can have reactivation of this TB. Do you find anything of their, their statement which is supported uh, by this theory on this X-ray? Okay, because- We can have, we can help the clinicians anyway by these films. Uh, from these films, I don't see features of malignancy really. So right. maybe that this patient is immunosuppressed by something else like HIV and is having a reactivation. Right. So what, what we can do for the clinicians? They are really worried that uh, if this patient can have uh, reactivation of TB by immunosuppression and their main concern is uh, the malignancy or the metastasis. So what, how we can help them? What we will advise them? CT, chest, abdomen, pelvis, to look for any malignancy. But based on this yeah. find, my first differential will also be to ex exclude um, immunosuppression from HIV, to check the HIV status. Okay. Any feature uh, of HIV? HIV we can see on this film? Uh, 
I'm not, I'm not sure. Oh, not we are not sure. Any feature of malignancy we can see on this film? Apart from, the, you said the sclerosis is technical. So outside that, yeah. I don't see any features. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to this one. We will come back to this one. Okay, uh, this case, sorry, this is, I have, I, I will turn on. Okay. Okay. 20 seconds left, actually. Okay, okay. Sorry, Dr. Sabah, that case, actually, we will come back to it, uh, Dr. Rashida. Okay, this is 43 years old male who presented with radicular type pain. Can you describe what are the sequences and what are the findings? Can can you raise your voice, Dr. Rashida? Sorry, I cannot hear you. The first one is a surgical T1 weighted um, sequence of the lumbar spine, and the second is a T2 weighted sequence. The middle one is an axial uh, T2 weighted sequence. Yes. So um, the T1 with a sequence actually shows a diffuse a low signal in the vertebral in the marrow of the vertebral bodies. And yes. We've seen in on the T2 with a sequence. Uh, there is also, uh, however, the vertebral body height are preserved. The intervertebral discs are also largely pre preserved. Uh, on the T2-weighted sequence, there is a mild desiccation and a minimal loss of height at multiple levels of the disc with um, a disc bulge at S5, S, um, L5-S1 level. Uh, there is no, um, there is no, um, the spinal canal is capacious. There is no spinal canal stenosis on the sequences. So based on this findings of low density, uh, low marrow signal in both T1 and T2 weighted second, I'm thinking of a diffuse sclerosis of the bones. Um, yeah, sorry, what, what you are thinking? Probably the bones are sclerosed because they are okay. both, uh, of low intensity. Yes, and good. My differentials because of the diffuse and um, homogeneous nature, uh, we'll be thinking of uh, myelofibrosis. Uh, yes. Uh, we're thinking of mastocytosis. Um, metastasis would not be this uniform. Uh, yes. But I would keep it at a very low, low level. Okay. So, so what? Want to inform what? the uh, clinician of my findings and um, refer this patient to the uh, hematological. Um, MDT uh, for further evaluation with um, CT abdomen um, to look, um, you can start an ultrasound to look for enlarged spleen, which will be seen in myelofibrosis as well as mastocytosis. I uh, would also want to look at any previous radiographs because I can, I may also be able to demonstrate this on um, radiographs. So if there are any previous radiographs, I want to look at them or if they are known, patient can actually have um, this done too. I think it's time up. 15 minutes is over. Yes, it was. Uh, Rafayaz, you have to wrap it up now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, the Dr. Rashida, really, you have done well, extremely well, except the one case where we were stuck, and uh, I will come back. You have done excellent. Uh, this one, this case, actually, the findings are such in this case that uh, the radiologist was compelled to take the telephone because there is some general principle that the density in the vertebra should not be less than the disc or equal to the disc and uh, paraspinal muscles. So this is very well picked by you. And this has a long differentials, actually both benign and malignant conditions come under this category. and. Uh, Um, hello, we can't hear Dr. Ayaz. Anybody can hear Dr. Ayaz? No. Dr. Ayaz, think, we can't uh, hear you. He lost in between. He's still here. There's um, some uh, problem with his mic connection, actually. Yes. I think, I think either it is pulled out 
or he needs to reset his uh, uh yeah he's doing yeah. something okay right. no no yes uh, can you uh, hear me yes you yeah. can hear me yes yeah okay uh, dr rashida really um, uh, good job in this case so i will go back to the previous cases actually very well presented you this pseudo lien case and uh, i want to share that this case is actually a real exam case i am collecting i am collecting some database i am new in this uh, road so i am collecting from uh, uh, the previous candidates some previous cases which came into the exam and this is one of the case i got from these two candidates and this is not my case actually this is a pseudo lesion when you see something in one modality and uh, the patient uh, you have described very well you go you have gone through the correct route and the patient underwent for the cross sectional imaging and there is nothing on this one so this is a pseudo lesion and it came into the exam and this is not my case this case uh, i have taken uh, permission from muscular skeletal radiology for you to share in this forum and uh, this is a simple case and it was a starter case for one of my friend in the viva and you have really done very well in this case the next case actually this this case took all of our time and intentionally i want to probe you that uh, you should you should have a review you should look at this one because such films can come into the exam and there is a principle here that the radiological densities they can vary inversely with the importance that yani there can be films when there is something for example if we have this is also case from uh, some collection and it is also the previous exam case long time and uh, if you will see that uh, if we will show this case to any candidate he is going to pick the splenic calcifications as you pick the second if we probe the renal calcification will come into the eye but you see you will miss the the breast shadow is missing something is missing on the right side so breast shadow is there there is no breast shadow so if you will keep this thing in mind you will search for something related to breast or breast cancer so little windowing you can see that there is well defined lesion in the right sacral area if we see side by side there is something here so radiological density is the importance is more for this lesion than the calcification okay the calcification you make you make a diagnosis for the tb yes splenic calcification renal calcification the combination will be the tb but the more important diagnosis which we have to make they are they are thinking about the malignancy and the metastasis and they are thinking that the immune status of the patient can change and patient can have reactive tb yes patient can have so if we see that the breast shadow is missing and there is definitely there there, there is a lesion whatever you if you compare by any means there is something here so actually the patient will need a staging ct and will be referred for the dex mdt and the xhs has to be done and if you find any reactivation on the xhs it should be notified to the infection control department and if the patient is having malignancy the all the work of malignancy has to be done and the patient uh, immune status patient can go into the immunosuppression and can have the reactivation of tb so there is a message here that the radiological densities very inversely so this was the case that we spend more time that probably you will look so this is a lesson here overall your performance is very good and i think you have passed with this performance if you are in the viva you might have passed thank you thank you dr anybody Shida. any anybody any comment dr sanjeet dr sabahat other colleagues uh thank you dr uh, uh, both the doctors um nice cases um uh, dr uh, I ask if you could stop sharing, then Dr. Shida can start sharing her case, and yes. uh, we can proceed for the fourth hot seat. So now, Dr. Rashida would act as the examiner, and Dr. Ayaz, you will be in the hot seat. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah, go ahead. So I think it's twelve. Can you show the picture again? Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I think this is a 12 years old uh, male uh, with no any sport uh, history. This is a, a AP view of the pelvis and both uh, hip joints. Um, uh, there is some a mild widening in the uh, uh, left uh, uh, hip joint. Uh, and uh, well, uh, um, I can't see any difference uh, when I'm comparing both sides with each other uh, in the uh, uh, epiphysis, uh, femoral, femoral head epiphysis, and uh, no any other uh, lesions in the neck and the proximal femori. Um, and because it is 12 year old and no uh, sport in injuries, uh, I prefer a frog leg uh, view uh, for, uh, to get more information if possible, yes. Well, uh, this view is more informative because I can see here there is uh, uh, some uh, slipping of the femoral uh, head epiphysis uh, medially and inferiorly. inferiorly. And when I uh, uh, draw a, a, a client line, uh, it, it should uh, transect one sixth of the femoral epiphysis here. It is not transecting it. So I think there is, uh, when I compare the, the left side, uh, uh, there is, I think it is on the right side, so it is uh, right femoral head epiphysis, uh, slipped femoral epiphysis, Sufi. So, uh, pardon? Yes. What would you do? You've made the yeah. diagnosis. Yes, uh, I should inform the orth uh, referring orthopedist uh, uh, for this uh, 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 case uh, for pinning. Uh, uh, because uh, to get uh, not, not to get uh, a vascular necrosis in the future, uh, so uh, just inform the orthopedist uh, because it is preferred to be pinned in these cases. Yeah, do you hear me? Yes. This is the second case: uh, twenty years old male with a hand pain and swelling. Presentation. Yes, well, this is a frontal chest X-ray of the hand. Uh, there is massive uh, 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 high density, which is keeping with calcification of the soft tissue in the tip of the uh, fingers, specifically the uh, uh, um, first, second, third, and fourth uh, uh, fingertips. Um, this is uh, a massive calcification. This is specifically with the scleroderma. And there is also acroosteolysis, uh, uh, more uh, uh, obviously seen in the fourth, uh, uh, the tip of the fourth uh, uh, distal uh, phalanx of the fourth finger. So acroosteolysis, soft tissue calcification, uh, this is specifically goes with scleroderma. What would you do? This is uh, uh, aren't many case. What to do? Uh, I can uh, look to the uh, chest X-ray if in the scleroderma there is other findings like uh, pleural effusion or uh, any other uh, uh, cases in the, like in esophagus or uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, what would you do after you make this diagnosis? What would you do? What would you tell the clinician? Yeah, I inform the clinician, the rheumatologist, that uh, this patient is. Uh, uh, has a scleroderma and uh, will ask for uh, the serology test of this patient and uh, look for the other exams like chest x-ray and this is what I know. Yes, 10 years old with left hip pain. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is, uh, this is a, a AP view of the pelvis and uh, both uh, hip joints. Well, there is a, a, a ratification or loss of uh, density in the um, left uh, upper uh, uh, femoral uh, epiphysis and metaphysis. Uh, and I think there is some uh, swelling around the, uh, in the surrounding soft tissues. And uh, 
because it is unilateral affection and uh, maybe it is due to uh, uh, plural uh, 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 joint effusion with soft tissue uh, uh, swelling and uh, uh, lytic lesion or low density uh, lesion in the femoral head. So all these keep uh, in mind uh, uh, infection, uh, septic arthritis of the left hip joint. And uh, I would uh, like to see the uh, uh, white blood cells of the patient and the clinical picture of the patient if he has any fever or uh, uh, any other uh, signs which goes with infection. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, Would you like to do any other imaging modality? Yes, I, I, I'm thinking of MRI of the hip just to see the bone affection uh, or infiltration, how it is affected. I have a CT for you. Okay, well, yes. In this CT, uh, my mind is now completely, uh, um, I'm seeing here a uh, uh, lytic lesion in the uh, greater trochanter of the uh, uh, femur with uh, anidus in it, and there is diffuse sclerosis around it. So, um, so that low density, it's most probably due to, to the diffuse edema around the bone. This is a picture of uh, osteoid, uh, uh, osteoma and the differential diagnosis, it could be chronic infection and, uh, uh, but this is osteoid osteoma. So how would you manage this patient? What would you do? Well, I will uh, refer this to bone, uh, uh, center, tumor center, or to uh, interventional radiology, uh, ju just to uh, uh, for RF ablation of the nidus, or for uh, if if it is goes to in, in, in uh, uh, orthopedic department for the curate and uh, 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 curating the uh, nidus of the lesion. Uh, yes. This is a presentation records scurvy and no patients data supplied by author. Record survey, sorry. Yeah, well, uh, in this uh, AP view of the uh, uh, knee joint, uh, there is a, a metaphysical uh, uh, marginal uh, uh, elevation of the uh, cortex. Uh, like a bucket handle appearance. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, I can't see any other uh, finding here. This could be due to the yield rickets. Uh, and uh, it is well done that it is seen from the presentation that this patient had a ricket and uh, in her survey. So it may be due to rickets. In a differential diagnosis for this, it could be a uh, uh, non-accidental injury, uh, uh, but I can't see any other uh, fracture in the diaphysis. Uh, well, I okay. will, yes. If you think it is non-accidental injury, what would you do? Yes, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, ask the, uh, I will call the uh, uh, referring pediatric uh, doctor uh, just to, uh, to do more uh, exams uh, for the uh, uh, for the brain CT and for papillo uh, edema to see if, if I will send them to the uh, ophthalmologist and I will look to the long bones and the chest X-ray of the uh, uh, chest chest X-ray for the for any other multiple injuries in the tubular bones and uh, uh, of course I will refer it, uh, I will ask also the pediatric uh, pediatric uh, doctor just to inform him about uh, such a suspicion because it is medical legal condition. Well, the presentation is unknown. This is a female of, uh, uh, yes, uh, 50 years old female. Yes, this is a, a frontal check, uh, AP chest, uh, uh, sorry, AP view of both hands, while uh, showing there is a, a resorption of the tips of the uh, phalanx bilaterally, uh, specifically in the second and third and fourth, I, uh, as I, I see. So this is acroosteolysis. And uh, 
in the differential diagnosis of uh, acroosteolysis. There is many. Uh, um, well, uh, I I need to see. Yes, there is resorption of the. Uh, 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 there is uh, subperiosteal resorption and intracortical resorption of the uh, middle phalanx uh, on the radial side of the uh, third finger. And there is a diffuse uh, decreased density in both hands. Uh, this is uh, most probably uh, uh, goes with uh, hyperparathyroidism. And uh, if, uh, if there is any other views like to see the, uh, this is hyperparathyroidism. So how would you, what would you do? Well, in hyperparathyroidism, I will... Yeah? Pardon? Yeah, I missed... Yeah, yeah. How would you manage this patient? Yes. Well, uh, I, will, uh, I will try to uh, see if this patient is a renal failure patient and will ask... Uh, uh, will see to... Uh, 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 will talk with the referring doctor uh, to... Uh, uh, look for the other organs, like like if there is a brown tumor in other bones, and uh, uh, will also uh, screen the spinal co uh, co uh, spi uh, vertebrae for the uh, renal osteodystrophy, and uh, uh, will we'll look to the uh, metabolic uh, factors uh, like in parathyroid hormone and. Uh, uh, We'll discuss it in the, we'll refer it to the uh, MDT uh, to discuss all these uh, situations and to correct the treatment of the patient to, uh, because if the uh, uh, metabolic factors will be corrected, uh, the problem will be less. Uh, this is 40 years female with hand pain. Yes. Well, this is uh, AP view of uh, uh, hand. There is a diffuse uh, 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 lytic expansile lesion in the second metacarpal bone. Uh, where, and there is uh, multiple septi within the lesion. And uh, there is another lesion in the uh, proximal phalanx of the first uh, uh, finger. Uh, well, this is... Uh, uh, keeping with the multiple uh, expansile lesions, differential diagnosis, multiple inchondroma, or uh, all year, and it could be also due to metastasis in the appendicular uh, bones. Well, uh, can I see the other view, the oblique one? Maybe it is more helpful. Yeah, these are two uh, lesions two expensile lesions. I think this is, uh, uh, it goes with inchondroma, uh, uh, multiple inchondroma, it could be all year because I can't see any soft tissue swelling or calcification. So, uh, uh, and also it could be brown tumor and parathyroid hormones. So I'm going to uh, fig uh, phignomachic differential diagnosis of well-defined but uh, lytic lesions this is, could be uh, inchondroma, uh, metastasis, brown tumor, and uh, uh, yes. Well, yeah. 40 years female with long history of bone deformities since childhood and the three previous episodes of long bone fractures. Normal neurological development, physical examination shows some cafe au lait spots on the skin. Yes, this is a lateral uh, view of the skull. There is diffuse uh, uh, increased density of the, uh, of the calvarium with uh, uh, it's like cotton wool appearance. And yes, here also uh, a very massive density with increased uh, diploic spaces and... Uh, 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 can I see the other views also, please, the extremities? No, this is the only one I want to show you. <laughs> okay, <So> thank <laughs> you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... Uh, um, Hi, Doctor. Uh, 
time up for 15 minutes over okay okay <laughs> okay so can you just quickly tell me what you think regarding this one well i think uh, well, there is little bit in, increase in the uh, in the size of the uh, maybe pagets. Uh, it's it's increase in the size of the skull, but because of cafe ole, uh, my mind is very confused. I'm just trying to think of any other thing. It could be metastasis. What do you think with the cafe ole? What what comes to your mind? And neurofibromatosis, and if neurofibromatosis, so uh, there should be. Actually, this is a case of um, fibrous dysplasia. Okay, okay. The only spot is like, you know, it should be a clincher sort of, because this is a craniofacial fibrous dysplasia. Okay. And it's described as blistering of parsities, you know, with widening of the deep. Like everything you mentioned, there's also sclerosis of the base of the skull. There's, you know, expansion of the maxillary sinus with obliteration, actually craniofacial. Um, fibrous dysplasia, and then you may want to look at other parts to rule out a polyostotic, you know, fibrous yeah. dysplasia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Because in the extremities, it's very obvious to be a fibrous dysplasia. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I know well, head seat is a very exciting place here. I, I, I forget what I know. <laughs> yes, this is polyostotic well, fibrous overall, you did yeah. Very yeah. well. You did very okay. well. You were able to pick up the findings and give the good um, diagnosis. So I'll start from the, uh, let's go to the previous one. Okay. So this one, uh, this is actually a case of sarcoidosis and this is described as the least. Oh, pattern. yes, yes, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, this I... is actually a case of sarcoidosis. And chondroma is a differential but yes. this was actually, it's, it's as a classic appearance of a list-like um, pattern. And then there is actually a small peristal reaction. So there is probably a fracture somewhere with yes. a peristal reaction, but this is sarcoid. And uh, so if it's a sarcoid, you know, you would want to manage along that line. Okay. So I will look to the, I, I ask for chest X-ray. Yeah, you may want to, you know, look look out for the, at the chest to see if there are other systems involved, especially the chest and all that. Okay. And you want to refer to the clinic to MDT. Okay, thank you. And then the so this you actually because it's on the peristers peristers reaction. The only thing is that when you see a crystallizes with subperistal reaction, you, sh you should think, and if this is the only image you're given, you should think first of a primary hyperparathyroidism because whatever diagnosis you give, you should be able to manage. So when you give a diagnosis or you give a differential, then you manage along the line of what you've mentioned. So you shouldn't mention too many things. Okay. So you will not have to talk about everything you've mentioned. So in the case of, um, it's a case of hyperparathyroidism, but you want to separate it from whether it's a primary or a secondary. So if you're thinking a primary, then you want to suggest imaging of the neck to look for a parathyroid adenoma, which is still part of your radiological management. And then you also want to look for, like you mentioned, any renal issues to rule out the secondary hyperparathyroidism, and then you correlate to the serum markers. Thank you. Good case. So the imaging of the neck, you can do, you can sound, you can do nuclear medicine, Okay. okay, now I didn't change this. I jumped it. Sorry. Okay, so this one, the patient was not said to have rickets. They are looking for rickets, actually. So they are suspecting that this patient has rickets. So that's why they call it rickets. So okay. the first thing is that there is no evidence of rickets in this so and you actually picked the metaphyseal fracture, um, bucket handle fracture. And this is actually very specific for NAI. Yes. So you don't really need another imaging modality to raise that high level of suspicion. So what you, are, what you, you need to do is, like you also mentioned, you have to do a skeletal survey and yes. a CT scan of the brain to rule out um, subdural hematomas. 
So the skeletal survey is usually done about two weeks following the initial presentation so that hidden fractures will be more obvious at that time. And like you mentioned, it's a medical legal um, condition. So you need to urgently alert the pediatrician or the clinician to inform the pediatrician if the pediatrician is not already involved. Okay, thank you very much. I, I thought it is Ricketts. Uh, I, I, I confused. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I suspected that. But of course, there are other things that can cause uh, metaphysical corner fractures. But when you don't see any other, other abnormality on that bone, then you have to definitely think of a non, um, non-accidental injury. The other common differential would be a dysplasia, and so the underlying bone would not be normal. No, uh, when I read uh, uh, Ricketts' survey, I thought it is, uh, it is uh, well, uh, a non-case of Ricketts. Uh, I just uh, confused there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are right, okay. it is non-accidental injury case. And this one, you actually missed this fine on the x-ray. This was actually the abnormality, but the CT gave it away. The case of the osteodos tumor. Yes. But you, you, you later got it, so that was fine. Thank you. And, uh, and this one to you, you did well. It was a case of scleroderma. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do in, in scleroderma uh, uh, management? So in, in, in this, because it's almost, it's not uh, pathogenic, but the findings of acrosteolysis, soft tissue calcifications, and which are actually limited to the phalanges, you know, is highly suggestive. And the other parts of the bone are normal. There is no arthropathy. So you want to, you know, correlate with any clinical history to also, you know, make you more confident in your diagnosis or you want to image other parts of the body. So, but basically with that finding, you know, you can refer to the connective tissue MDT for further management. But other, you can also mention other um, differentials that would give acrosteolysis and other differentials that can give soft tissue calcifications. Okay, thank you very much. And then this one to the, the purpose of this film actually is to show that having an AP film of the pelvis in a, page, in a young patient with hip pain is not enough because you can actually miss a slipped um, upper fe um, femoral epiphysis. Because in this case, the line of, and then you also said the line of clean on the frog leg. No, you measure it on the AP, not on the frog leg. Okay. So if you measure the line of clean, which is a line that goes through the femoral neck, it shoots by, uh, you know, goes through the epiphysis. And if you do it on this case, you can actually see it go through the epiphysis, but it doesn't mean that it is normal. The only um, slight subtle finding here is the widening of the growth plate, if you compare it to the left. But aside that, this could be passed for normal. Whereas on the frog leg, it is clear that there is actually a slit epiphysis. You also mentioned that this is an inferior medial. It's actually a posterior medial slip. Okay. That's the classic description. That is a posterior medial slip. And also in managing this patient, you need to, it, we know that this one looks normal on this x-ray, but x-rays are not very sensitive. So before any management, they need to do a, maybe a pre-operative MR to look for subtle you know, sleep on the other side so they can treat it. Or at times they may even just do a prophylactic treatment on the other side that may be normal. So okay. it's, it's, a, it's part of the management to suggest a, an MR for okay. further evaluation of the supposedly normal side. To but be sure uh, pin, that really pinning normal. is an emergency because uh, uh, of the... Uh, yeah, even, even, even at that, you sh they should do it because they could do it in one city. They could do the pinning in one city. So they okay. need to do a preoperative assessment you know, okay. before the, because the first thing is they put this patient on bed rest. So mm -hmm. while the patient is on bed rest, they can actually do the MR to, mm -hmm. to confirm that there's no sleep on the other side. And so okay. it can be treated at sitting actually. So I think it's part of the management. So, so we should ask for MRI first, then, uh, yes, refer it, okay. Sorry? 
So we should ask for M uh, we should ask for MRI no, to to see if there is bilateral. So the first thing you want, to inform, you want to inform the clinician. You want to refer for orthopedic. You know, we want to refer to the orthopedic surgeon, but you also recommend an MR to evaluate the other hip for any subtle slip before okay. you know final decision. So I think it's okay to mention it that way. Okay, thank you. So overall, you did very well. Uh, what I would just want to highlight is that for every case, at least from the teachings I've attended, for every case you treat, you need to follow the pattern of a long case. So you do the findings, you give your diagnosis, you give differentials where applicable, and you manage the patient. So it yeah. should be complete like that. So if you stop at the differentials, you may be prompted to say the management, you may not be prompted, but ideally you should say what you would do. Maybe okay. you just want to inform the clinician, if you want to refer to any MDT, if you want to, you know, if there's any radiological um, management, like in the case of the osteoma, whereby a patient can have a radio frequency ablation. So we need to mention all those things in one go before we take a pause. Okay. So aside that, you did very well. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rashida, Dr. Nuran, Dr. Ayaz. Uh, Dr. Nuran, thank you for, uh, you know, uh, pitching in at the last Sips. moment. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rashida, for preparing such an excellent playlist, uh, you know, in, in just one day. Um, that was amazing and a very informative uh, playlist. And it's wonderful that all the four uh, playlists, I think we hardly had any overlap. So um, a very good sessions. Okay, there is a question in the chat box regarding if the frog's uh, view would be, um, you know, risky. Um, uh, uh, everybody is open to the suggestion, but I think this is something which, uh, which is a matter of, um, you know, uh, conversation all the time. In some books, they say it. In some books, they don't say it. Um, I think the safe way would be to go that in my institution, or according to the pro institution protocol, what do you say, Dr. Uh, Rashida? What, what do you want to say regarding this? I don't understand the question. Is it regarding the MR for the- No, no, the frog's lateral view, it's supposed to- I think it's, it's a standard it can view. exacerbate. Standard view for you to exclude the slipped femoral epiphysis. Uh -huh. So I think it should be done. Um, now, I don't know if some, you know, pro some trust have protocols whereby it's not done, but I think it's actually the most important view. And I believe some don't even go ahead to do an AP at all. They just go straight for a frog leg lateral. So yeah, is, but if it's uh, if it's evident already on AP, then we don't need, we probably don't need the frog leg lateral yeah. uh, because it, it may exacerbate. But yeah. if the patient presents with typical clinical scenario and there is uh, the AP is almost normal, in that case, we should definitely proceed to do a frog leg lateral. The benefits uh, overweigh the risk in that case. Exactly. exactly. Very good. Sunit, do you want to add something? Yeah, same, same. I, I agree, agree to that. Yes. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and uh, regarding Nuran, uh, he did well, uh, but uh, the examiner uh, told correctly, like uh, you were stopping at the DD. So uh, you, we have to learn uh, how to summarize the case because in all cases, we have to summarize the case by saying the management. You have to refer to the appropriate MDT or appropriate uh, consultant, specialist consultant. And, yes. and the film should go down. So in most of the cases, your films are not going down. So uh, in all the cases, except one, I think uh, the examiner has to prompt you uh, to uh, keep the film go down. So we have to learn how to conclude the films and what we should do. Uh, uh, and you know all the findings and you are uh, describing it very correctly and uh, concluding. I mean, saying that up, up to saying the DD, but after that, uh, you are getting stuck. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I should go systematically as long case. Uh, you are systematic. Uh, you are systematic till DD, but after that, uh, uh, you are silent. Uh, <laughs> so you have to <laughs> conclude like, uh, okay, so I'll refer this to the orthopedician or I'll refer to the immunologist. I'll, I'll, I'll do uh, MRA or like that. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Sabah, before you give the concluding remarks, I would just like to take a moment to yes. thank you and uh, Dr. Sanij for, you know, spending so many sleepless nights over organizing these sessions, especially Dr. Sanij, because I think it's quite literally 
C plus for him. So True. amazing dedication actually, and uh, given the technical difficulties which are which arise in these sessions, you're already prepared with a backup candidate and everything. So thanks so much for for going the extra mile. Uh, I hope this this is like useful for everyone.